<laughs> Hi, you kids. I am Nicole from Nicole Star Studios. Thank you so much for joining me in our practice today. Let's go ahead and begin. Have your props handy. So blankets, bolsters, blocks, straps, and eye pillows. You do not have to have props and nor do you have to use them, but I will certainly be cueing them. And you can listen to your own music or you can play along with me. I will be playing on my Spotify account. It is the flow playlist flow with the word instrumental in parentheses. So if you are going to be playing that, go ahead and start it now, making sure it's not on shuffle and then scooch it to the side. Come to that seated position. You can sit upon blankets or bolsters or even blocks. You can come to a cross-legged position, Sukhasana, easy seat. You can bring one foot in front of the other. You can practice half lotus or full lotus. If this doesn't serve you, can, you can also come to a hero's pose. You can also always start on your mat. So just come to your seated position of choice. And since the theme of our class today is receiving, we are going to start with our palms facing up on your knees or your thighs, whatever allows the elbows to be more in line with the shoulders and nice long spine, closing the eyes, take that deep breath in and breathing out. Hmm. And simply allow that cleansing sigh, that deep inhale to be your invitation. Your invitation into this present moment. Trusting the truth that you deserve to be here. You deserve to take up space you deserve to receive and to radiate. You certainly have earned this moment of time to yourself. And if you have done nothing more but beyond breathe today, that breath is a way that you have earned it because it is a God-given right to rest, to be, to care for yourself. So here you can set your own intention or you can acknowledge the affirmation as your intention that states, I deserve to receive and care for myself. Let's acknowledge this intention, this affirmation within own inhaling. Uh, when you are ready, flip your palms facing down onto your knees or your thighs and open your eyes. Switching out your feet, so whichever foot you had in front, bring the opposite foot on front. And we are gonna practice some seated cat cow. So on the inhale, open up through your chest. Imagine there's a string, draw that string toward the ceiling. On the exhale, round your back, draw chin to chest. And then move at your own pace with your own breath. Inhale, open, receive. Exhale, empty, release. And if it serves you, you can deepen the breath by creating a slight constriction in the back of your throat, that ujjayi breath for our vinyasa practice today. 
where you're creating a little bit of noise there as if you were fogging up a mirror with your mouth closed. And after you've evened out both sides, come to neutral, bringing your left leg in front. Inhale, reach through those arms up overhead. Maybe palms touch, maybe they don't. On the exhale, twisting over to the right, bringing your hands down as your twist. So you can bring your left hand in front. It can be planted or cut. You can even bring that left hand to your right knee. You can have the palm facing down. If the palm faces down and it pulls the knee up, flip the palm facing up. Inhale as we lengthen, exhale, twist a little bit more, maybe looking over your right shoulder. That back hand, that right hand can be planted. It can be cupped. It can even be placed on the block. With every inhale, elongate through the spine a little bit more. With every exhale, deepen the twist. So imagine that with every inhale, we're filling, we're receiving. With every exhale, we're emptying, we're releasing. So see how you have to, even with the breath, receive before you can give. Inhale, lengthen on the exhale, untwist back to center, unravel out of that twist, bringing your opposite leg forward. Inhale, reach to those arms, palms touch, maybe they don't. On the exhale, twisting over to the left. Again, remember that right hand can come out front, can be planted, cupped, or even on the block. So can that back hand planted, cupped, or on the block. And you can have that palm facing down or up. Inhale, lengthen, exhale, twist, maybe looking over that left shoulder. Inhale, lengthen, exhale as we unravel back to center, palms touch and release the hands down. You can either kick your feet to the side or you can roll forward coming into a tabletop position, wrists in line with shoulders, knees in line with hips, spreading those fingers nice and wide. If you're feeling pressure under your knees, take a blanket, open it up, place it under your knees. Inhale, lowering the belly, reaching through the top of the tailbone and the top of the head. Exhale as we round, draw belly button in, chin to chest. Again, moving at your own pace. With your own breath, inhale, open, exhale, round. And I really want you, as you continue to move here in our cat cow, seeking your version of choice, maybe you shift forward, maybe you round back, maybe you add barrel rolls and hip circles. I just want you to embrace this idea that before you can give, before you can empty, before you can offer this thanksgiving season, you have to be thankful for yourself. You have to receive, you have to draw in. Just like the breath, inhaling, filling up, exhale, emptying out. After the next time you exhale around, return to tabletop. Now we are going to be here for a few moments. So if you're really feeling a lot of pressure under those knees, take a blanket, open it up, place it under your knees and have your blocks handy. I'm going to put one on each side and I'm turning. You can stay facing the front of your mat. I am turning so that you can see me. Stepping your right leg out to the side, pointing the toes forward and see how when I step my foot out to the side, my hip wants to cock out to the side. See if you can draw that hip back. So your right hip is drawing toward your left ankle. Toes pointing forward if that serves you. Now, if that does not serve you, if it feels less stable, then by all means, point your toes out slightly. Pushing the floor away from you, armpits away from the mat, broaden your collarbone. On the inhale, reach through this left arm up and out to the side and pause. So inhale, I want you to imagine I am holding your right hand and I am pulling that right or that left hand and I'm pulling it up, up, up toward the ceiling. On the exhale, you can thread the needle, bringing your left hand under the right, maybe even bringing your left face cheek to the mat. Pause. You see how my hip is talking to the side to draw that right hip back to left ankle. You can stay here or maybe your left hand wants to reach for that big toe. Again, see if you can embrace that without force, accepting where you're at in your body today, knowing that everybody's body is different. And every single day, your beautiful body is different. With your right hand, you can keep it where it is. Or you can bring the back of that hand to the sacrum, the upside down triangle at the base of your spine. You can also bring it around and reaching for your left thigh. Breathe.
five, four, three, two, one. If your right arm is in a bind, bringing your right hand down, planting it into the mat, breathing in, breathing out. Inhale, reaching that right arm or left arm up and out to the side. And exhaling that hand down onto the mat, coming up, pointing your toes to the side. Now, maybe that foot wants to stay out to the side or maybe you wanna walk it in a little bit more as we bend the knee. From here, I want you to draw that hip back toward the opposite ankle. Good, now stay here. You can even place your hands on your hips or maybe you want to bring your right hand to the inside of your right foot. Drawing left hip back to right ankle. See if you can take your knee and draw it toward your elbow, your elbow to the knee. You see how this helps to open us up? Staying here. Or you can extend through that top arm, that left arm, flip the palm facing up. Inhale up and over. Beautiful. See if you can open up the heart a little bit more toward the ceiling. Honor your neck, look down to the side or up. I know you know what this pose is. So our little side angle, right? If we had this back leg off of the mat, it would be a different variation of side angle. So please know at any point in any practice on any day, you can always lower a leg down. This is by no means a weaker variation, a lesser variation. This is a version of side angle pose. Reaching to the top arm, inhaling, the exhale bring us up. Put your arms into a T, turn the toes to the side and walk that foot back, bringing your left hand down, bringing your right hand onto your hip. So that left hand can be planted or cut. It can also be on a block. Bring it directly under the shoulder. Now, if it's under the shoulder and you're feeling some pinch in here, simply walk it out to the side a little bit more, creating some more space. Stay here or lift the back leg up, flexing through the foot. So toes pointing away from your body. There you go. Ardha Chandrasana, half moon. Again, this is a variation of half moon. Five, four, three, two, one. Bringing that leg down, coming back up, turning the knees to center, bringing your hands back down. Pause, take a breath in and out. Extending our left leg out to the side, toes pointing forward, pushing the armpits away from the mat, broaden the collarbone, bringing your left hip back toward the right ankle. Inhale, open up through that right arm. And again, imagine that I'm holding your hand, I'm pulling it toward the sky, opening, asking you, inviting you to receive. Inhale, reach the exhale, threads the needle. Bringing that right arm under your left, bringing your right face cheek to the mat, staying here. Or you can reach your right hand, grabbing a hold of your left big toe. You can stay here or the back of your left hand comes to that sacrum. Maybe it wants to reach around for the thigh. It's very natural for you to feel this quite differently on one side than the other. Four, three, two, one. Reaching through the top arm, bring, if it's bound, bringing it back down. Inhaling, exhaling. And the inhale, reach that right arm up and out to the side. And the exhale brings it to center. Coming on up, maybe the hands place onto the hips, pointing the toes to the side. Again, maybe that foot wants to walk a little closer. Maybe it wants to walk away again. There is no right way to do this. Everybody's body is different. So having a longer stance doesn't mean you're having a better stance or a more advanced asana and more advanced pose. It simply means that everybody's body is different. And the whole concept of yoga is to honor your beautiful, unique body. 
and then bend your left knee. So you can bring that hand to the inside or the outside of that foot planted or cupped. Open the chest toward the ceiling. Good. So as that right knee draws toward the elbow, draw the elbow to the knee. Do you feel that? That helps create that isometric contraction. And then with that uh, top arm, so you can keep it where it is on the hip. You can extend it to the side. You can flip the palm up. You can even inhale up and over. A side angle, asana, side angle pose. Reaching through the top arm, coming back to center, turning the toes to the side. Let's go ahead and wiggle that foot back and bringing your right hand down again, planted or cut. Maybe it's closer to your body. Maybe it's further away. Whatever helps to prevent this side from dropping, bringing the armpit away from the mat. And then staying there or picking that leg up your left leg up, toes pointing away from you. That helps to flex the foot. So by flexing through the foot, you help to activate this leg. By activating the leg, you're helping to take the femur bone, the head of the femur, drawing it into the hip socket, which will help to create stability. By creating stability here, it allows us to embrace mobility. Bring in the leg back down as we come to center. Bring in the leg all the way down. Come into our tabletop position. Wrists in line with shoulders, knees in line with hips. Inhale, lower the belly, reaching through the top of the head and the tailbone. Exhale as we round our belly and chin to chest, returning back to a neutral spine. Curling your toes under, lift your tailbone up and back into our downward facing dog. It does not matter if your heels are touching. Try your best not to walk your feet forward, simply to allow your heels to touch. Embrace your own uniqueness. Heels are drawing to the mat, knees are soft, tailbone is long, hips are away from your ribs, collarbone is broad, fingers are spread wide. Downward facing dog, another version of downward dog is where you have your knees down, walking your arms a little bit further forward. You can also place your hands on blocks. If that serves you for your downward facing dog, you can also take a blanket and place a blanket to the back of your mat. This is particularly helpful for plantar fasciitis. Again, there is not one version of any of these poses. So take that time to find your variation. Looking at the top of your mat, bending your knees, coming all the way to the top. Your feet can be hip width apart or closer together, whatever serves your hamstrings, your quads, as well as your lower back. Planting the hands, cupping the hands, the hands can be more forward. They can be more fight by your feet. Either way, simply elongate through the spine. See if you can draw your tailbone away from you, the top of your head away from you. Do you see how creating this space, the tailbone away, the top of the head away, you are actually activating your abdominal muscles again, not by creating this tight constriction, but by creating space. By creating space here, it's naturally elongating and it's naturally gonna engage those muscles. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, bend your knees enough so your stomach is completely on your thighs as you release into your Uttanasana, your forward fold. So again, it is okay if your hands are out front or beside. It's okay if your knees are really, really bent. It's okay if your legs are straight. One version is not any better than the other. One person is not any better than the other. You are deserving exactly as you are. Inhale, lift, exhale, fold. Strong legs, pushing your feet into the floor allows us to come up. Inhale, arms down, around and up, overhead, palms touch. Exhale, hands to heart center. We're gonna flow through a few sun salutation A's to get the body moving, to get the body warmed up. Understand that there's so many different options, so please honor your version of sun salutation A. I will be verbally cueing, but, and I will be also cueing the breath. If your breath isn't aligned with my breath, honor yours. My breath will be inevitably be 
different than what yours is. So I'm all about you honoring if your, your pace is faster or slower than mine. Hands to heart center, inhale, arms up, palms touch. Exhale, soft knees, hinging at those hips, Uttanasana, forward fold. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, bend the knees, place the hands onto the mat, hopper, step back, plank, high push up, pause. So drive through the heels, shift the heels back, then shift the heels forward. So your heels are more in line with the balls of your feet. Armpits are away from the mat. Collarbone is broad. No, at any point you can lower your knees down. Inhale, exhale, lower knees, chest and chin, booty stays up in the air. This eight point pose. Pull the floor toward you as you lay all the way onto the mat. Push your pelvis into the earth, spread your fingers wide. So bring your hands far enough away so the elbows can be drawn toward your body without forcing the elbows into the body. You guys see the difference there? If I were to have my hands really close and force the elbows, it's just, it's not gonna happen. So for me and my body, I have to bring my hands out a little bit further and the elbows will go in. So you simply pull your, draw your shoulder blades down your back, elongate through the back of your neck. Inhaling, lift up into cobra. Maybe you do wanna straighten out your arms, but see, avoid this. This looks like it's a deeper pose. I promise you it is not. A soft elbow with shoulders down your back, even if it's a shorter lift is by all means much more advanced than something that looks deep like that, but it's certainly not. From here, curl your toes under. You can travel up through tabletop and then into child's pose or tabletop into downward facing dog or right into downward facing dog. Look at the top of your mat, bend your knees, hop or step forward, inhaling on the half lift, exhaling on the full, push legs into the earth, strong legs bring those up, overhead palms touch, exhaling, hands to heart center, inhale, arms up, palms touch, exhale, hinge at the hips, our Uttanasana, our forward full, inhale, half lift, Exhale, bend the knees, place the hands onto the mat, hop or step back, plank, high push up. Riding this exhale or the next exhale takes you into knees, chest, chin, or shift your weight forward so shoulders are in front of the wrist. Bend the elbows toward the back end of your mat. It's okay if they poke out, it's okay if they don't. And then you can pull lower all the way down onto your mat, or you can lift up into upward facing dog. Same concept here as Cobra, only your legs are straighter. And off of the mat, your arms are straighter without laughing or dumping. Remember, shoulder blades down the back. Curl your toes under, exhale, traveling through tabletop or right into downward facing dog. Look at the top of the mat, bend the knees, hop or step forward and inhale a half lift. Exhale as we fold, strong legs as we inhale, arms up overhead, palms touch. Exhale, hands down to heart center. Inhale, arms up, palms touch. Exhale, hinging at the hips, Uttanasana, or forward fold. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, bend the knees, place the hands on the mat, hop or step back, plank, high push up. Riding this exhale or the next exhale takes you into knees, chest, chin, or chaturanga. Inhaling, upward facing dog or cobra. Exhale, downward facing dog. Breathe here. Looking at the top of the mat, bend the knees, hop or step forward, inhale, half lift, exhale, fold, strong legs as we inhale the arms up overhead, palms touch, exhale, hands come down to heart center. Remember at any point, you can also grab a drink of water. So from here, I want you to find a drishti, a focal point in front of you. So something that's not moving. If you are looking out the window and it's a windy day, sometimes it's a little hard if you're looking at a tree or a leaf. So look at something in front of you that's not moving. Allow your feet to be hip width apart or together. Again, if your feet together allows you to feel stable here, stable in the pelvis, stable in the hips, then bring them together. But if not, then bring your, your um, legs apart. Again, one version is not better than the other. They are simply different options. Shifting the weight over into your right foot as you bend your left knee. Again, focus on that drishti, that focal point, feel grounded in your right foot, meaning press all four corners of that foot into the earth. So by four corners, I mean the base of your big toe, base of your little toe, inside and outside of the heel. So push that down into the earth. 
as you take the femur bone, the bone in your thigh and bring it up into the hips, lengthening your tailbone down, hands to the hips, see if you can create some space here. So again, it's not this tight constriction of the abdominal muscles. It's creating the space between your hips and the ribs. And then imagine that you're, you have a corset on and that corset is being tightened. So that corset is bringing it all in. Again, not just front to back, but everything is being corseted into the center here. All about finding our center, right? Long spine. Imagine, bend your left knee. Imagine that you are stepping on a box. So instead of the toes being pointed, it, they are flexed and you are stepping on that box. Stay here, or maybe you wanna take a strap and wrap a strap around your foot. And if you are gonna use a strap, instead of it going on the ball of your foot, allow it to go on that, on that arch, okay? Or you can use your peace fingers, wrap your peace fingers around the big toe, drawing that knee in toward your chest or toward your armpit, stay here, or you can straighten out that leg. Finding your drishti. So every time you stumble, every time you fall, instead of looking at it with judging eyes and discouragement, think about, yes, there's a chance for me to pick myself up. A chance for these fast switch stabilizing muscles to kick in. When you are ready, draw that foot out to the side. Lengthen through your tailbone, long spine. Back to center, stay here. Or maybe you wanna use the strap or your hands on the foot, drawing your nose towards your toes. Return to neutral, bend the knee, release it down. Avoid shaking it out. I know there may be some discomfort here, Embrace the discomfort, let it settle, let it move on its own. Shifting the weight over to your left foot, find the four corners of that foot, strong legs, femur bone up and in, lengthen tail, tailbone, space between hips and ribs. So if we were to use a corset and there wasn't to be space here, then it would really not have enough room to really uh, tie that corset very tight now, would it? So we have to create space between hips and ribs. And then imagine you're tying that corset nice and tight. Lifting up through your right leg, imagine you have, you're standing on that box. So imagining that we're standing on that box will help us to find that stability here. Stability helps encourage mobility, believe it or not. And then when you're ready, using a strap or not, or your peace fingers wrapping around the big toe, drawing that knee to chest or to armpit, and then maybe straightening out that leg. Instead of thinking of where you can give more, I want you to think of where you can receive more. Ooh, where can you open? in this pose, where can you do less? And if you're ready, you can bring that foot out to the side. It is very natural for it to not go as far as the other. Back to center, using strap or not, maybe drawing nose to toes. Bending the knee, releasing it down. Hands to heart center. Pause. Breathe. Breathe. Inhale, arms up overhead, palms touch. Exhale, hinging at our hips, Uttanasana, our forward fold. Inhale, half lift. 
Exhale as we bend the knees, place the hands onto the mat, hop or step back, plank, high push up, riding this exhale or the next exhale takes you into knees, chest, chin, or chaturanga. Inhaling upward dog or cobra, curling your toes under, exhale, downward facing dog. Breathe. Inhale, right leg up in the air. And the exhale, bending your right knee. Bring your right knee toward your stomach to your chest. Step your right foot forward. If you step halfway, simply take your time. Help that foot along. Releasing through your left heel. So turn that heel down and out. Now, see what serves you. Before we even go up, draw right hip back to left ankle and see what allows you to feel most stable when you do this. Meaning, instead of the idea that that front heel needs to be in line with your back arch, maybe it's your front heel in line with your back heel. Maybe it's your front foot out to the side a little bit more. What allows you to feel most stable here in the legs? What is going to encourage that deeper bend in your right knee? What is going to allow you to encourage that openness in your back? Find the place of stability. And then cartwheel your hands up. Vibhadrasana two, warrior two. Now, if you made a decision, you're like, whoops, that was not a great decision. You can always change your mind. And maybe you wanna step that foot back a little bit. Maybe you wanna step that foot forward. Honor your body from here, just like we did earlier. I want you to draw that right hip toward the back ankle exactly what we did with our knees down. In fact, like I said earlier, you can always put your legs down. You can always put that, bend that back knee. Lengthening through the tailbone, turn your chest forward. Now, if your chest is forward and that knee wants to come in, then simply turn your chest to the side. Extend your arms out to the side, flip the palms up. Imagine you're catching raindrops with your elbows. Keep the elbows up as you turn your palms facing down. Pause. Vibhadrasana two, warrior two, maybe even look off the tip of your right hand. Where can you find the stability to create mobility? Where can you center and ground so you can open and receive? Draw your right fingertips forward, hands forward, bringing your right hand again to the inside of that right foot, maybe the outside of that foot, maybe cupped, maybe planted maybe on the block, bringing your left hand palm facing down to your chest, open your heart to the ceiling. Do you guys feel that difference? Stay here, or maybe you wanna bring that left hand to the hip. Maybe you wanna reach up and over, just like we did. So draw your right knee into your right elbow, your right elbow into your right knee, right hip back to left ankle. Stay here for the stretch, the strength. If you want more of a sense of uh, strength. Maybe you want to pick that back arm up or that right arm up and imagine you're holding onto a beach ball. Maybe you want to offer me an apple. If you would like, you can even bind this just like we did earlier. Bring the back of that hand to the sacrum, bending your right elbow, bringing your right hand down and around. And I'm going to show you this on this side. I know you guys are still holding this. I know you're feeling it. So if this bottom arm, bring the bottom palm away, the top arm in, that's what will create the bind. Holding here, your variation for five, four, three, two, one. If you're bound, release out of the bind, return back to warrior two, straightening out your right leg, cocking your hips to the left, bringing left hand down, flipping right palm up, inhale, right hand up, and back, sky archer pose. Stay here, or you can take that left hand, grab a hold of your right wrist and draw in a little bit more to the back. Returning back to neutral, stepping your right foot in, bring your left hand to your hip, step your left foot in a little bit more. Find stability here in your right leg, bringing your right hand down either directly in front of your right foot about a foot in front of your foot or out to the side, planted, cupped, or on a block. Please remember, blocks are not a crutch. They are not a sign of a weaker practitioner or pose. 
They simply allow your arms to get a little longer. That really is it. And now find that sense of stability and then stay here or lift that back leg up, toes pointing away from you. Ardha Chandrasana, half moon. Now remember all of those cues that we did earlier, okay? The toes pointing away from you, flexing through the foot, finding the stability here in the pelvis, the length in the abdominal muscles, opening the chest more to the ceiling. That left hand can stay where it is, or maybe you wanna reach that left hand up, palm facing away from you, honor your neck, like down to the side or up. Another variation is where you bend your left leg, maybe grab a hold of that foot, open it up a little bit more. If you are looking for more strength, maybe you wanna balance your half moon and hover. Again, one variation is not better than the other. That looks great. Everybody's options are different. Holding five, four, three, two, one. Bending your right knee, releasing your left foot down. Pick your back heel up, opening up into crescent warrior, crescent lunge. Bringing those hands down, planting the hands on the mat as we step our right foot back plank, high push up, riding this exhale, or the next exhale takes you into knees, chest, chin, or chaturanga. Inhaling upward facing dog or cobra, curling your toes under, exhale downward facing dog, breathe. Inhale, left leg up, exhale, bend the knee, step it through. Take your time. If you sit halfway, take your time. Bring that foot all the way up. We are in no rush. Just like life, this happens at your own pace. Bring that back heel down. Your version. Find the placement of your feet that helps you to feel most stable in your pelvis. When you find it, when you listen to your body, when you befriend your body, cartwheel your hands up. Maybe chest goes, goes directly toward the long end of the mat. Maybe it is to the diagonal a little bit. Flip the palms facing up, chest ring jumps with your elbows as we turn the palms facing down. Maybe you wish to look off the tip of your left hand. Be Bhadrasana two, warrior two. That is great. Strong, powerful warriors. Bringing that left hand again inside or outside of your left foot, planted, cupped, or on a block. Right hand to your chest. Open your chest up to the ceiling. Left hip back to right ankle. Yep, that's it. Now from here, you can keep your right hand where it is. Maybe you want to bring your right arm up and over. Maybe you want to hold that beach ball. Maybe you want to offer me an apple. Or again, maybe you want to bind. The other beautiful part about yoga is that it really forces us to know what's going on moment to moment, day by day, because not every day our body is going to be the same. We're going to adapt. We're going to grow. We're going to evolve. So can you be open to receiving the messages that your body has to offer? Beautiful, everybody. All right, cartwheel those hands up, warrior two, straightening out your left leg, cocking your hips to the right, right hand down, left palm up, inhale up and over. Staying here, or your right hand wants to grab a hold of your left wrist. Maybe you want to take a mudra, left thumb and pointer finger touch as we open up and back. Returning those arms to neutral, bending your right knee, right, your left knee, right hand to hip, step your right foot in, and then bring that right, that left hand, either it's going to be directly in front of your left foot, about a foot in front of your foot, out to the side, planted, cuffed, or on a block, step your right foot in a little bit more, just like when we did that part of Padmasana, not Padmasana, Padagasasana, the standing big toe pose. You gotta find, you wanna find that stability in that standing leg. So once you find that stability in that standing leg, stay here or maybe bring your back leg up, toes pointing away from you. 
Maybe you wanna keep your right hand where it is. Maybe you wanna bring it up. Maybe you wanna hover your left hand, or maybe you even wanna grab a hold of that right foot. Again, so I know like this, grabbing this foot looks pretty fancy, right? If I were to do this, just get my foot, it is not a more advanced practice. The more advanced your practice is, the more you honor your body. Because as we all know, more you honor yourself and your body, that courageousness, that vulnerability, that acceptance, that yes, goodness, damn it, I am capable and deserving of receiving, the more advanced, the more challenging it is. Bending your left knee, bringing that foot down, picking your right heel up, bringing those hands up overhead, crescent warrior. Bringing the hands down, planting the hands to the mat, moving any support out of the way, step left foot back, plank, high push up. Riding this exhale or the next exhale takes you into knees, chest, chin, or chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog or cobra. Curl your toes under, exhale, downward facing dog, breathing in and out. Looking at the top of the mat, bend the knees, hop or step forward as we inhale a half lift. Maybe at this point, maybe you can walk your feet a little closer together. Maybe your hamstrings, your quads, your lower back are ready. Maybe not. Exhale, fold, Uttanasana. Strong legs as we inhale the arms up overhead, palms stretch. Exhale, hands to heart center. Inhale, arms up, palms stretch. Exhale, hinge at the hips, forward fold. Inhaling, half lift. Exhale, bend the knees, place the hands on the mat, hop or step back, plank, high push up. Riding this exhale, or the next exhale takes you into knees, chest, chin, or chaturanga. Inhaling, upward facing dog or cobra. Exhale, curl your toes under, downward facing dog. Take a breath in, give it back. Lowering your knees down to the mat, bringing the tops of your feet on the mat, big toe mounds together. So you can bring your knees wide enough apart as long as that serves you, your hips, your knees, and your lower back as we draw the sits bones back toward the heels. You guys have heard my many variations of this child's pose. You can stay here and bring your forehead down onto the mat. Maybe you want to bend your elbows and bring your hands a little closer to the neck. And simply listen. Listen to your breath, reflecting off of the mat. Can you feel this abundant Mother Earth supporting you, giving you so much peace, stability, support? nourishment. And with every inhale, are you willing to receive? And if that is a foreign concept to you, ask yourself why. And whatever the why is, Whatever the hesitation is that is stopping you from being open to receive, give that to Mother Earth with every exhale, trusting that she is infinite in her ability to take all that no longer serves you and recycle it into something new. She literally takes shit manure, uses it as fertilizer for new growth. So give empty, trusting that you will receive, that you deserve to receive. You are 
enough. You deserve to take up space. Coming back to a tabletop position. You can either cross at your shins and sit back or kick your feet to the side, extending those legs out front. Bring your hands behind the knees, inhale, open. Exhale, straighten out the arms as we release down. Dry knees to chest, back inside by side. <clears throat> Bringing the soles of your feet onto the mat allowed the feet to be about hip bone width apart, heels and toes in line with one another. Allow your shoulders to surrender to the earth, broaden that collarbone again, and check in with those abdominal muscles. Is there space here between your hips and the ribs? Maybe you wanna scooch your shoulders up without them going to your ears, without forcing them away from your ears, just allow the shoulder blades to be drawn down the back. Palms down beside you. On the inhale, lift your hips up in the air. Broaden your collarbone into bridge. Keep pushing your feet into the earth and then pull and drag your heels towards your body. Imagine you have a block between your legs. Squeeze that imaginary block as you pick those hips up a little bit more open. Receive. So let's stay here for a few moments. Knowing at any point you can come out of this. So the theme of the day was chest, neck, and shoulders receiving, of course. But you may be thinking, huh, I feel like we did a lot with the <laughs> neck and the shoulders. The reason being, so often we think that we're tight in our neck and shoulders. And we have like this overstretched muscle. Go ahead and pick the heels up. And then release down like you're dropping, placing down a strand of pearls one vertebra at a time. Heels come down last. We're gonna pause here in this uh, pose where we're, our psoas is neutralized. And then we're gonna go into that two more times. When we go into it two more times, if you do have wheel or a different variation of a heart opener, you can by all means feel free to um, practice that. So again, we have this tendency to say, oh my gosh, I'm so tight in my neck and shoulders from doing this. So we have these overstretched muscles. And then we say, okay, I'm, I have so much pain here. I need help stretching here. So this is already overworked. And <laughs> we're gonna add more work to it by stretching, by stretching, by stretching. It seems like intuitively that's something we have to do, but we have to do what's counterintuitive, which it would be. And if this is what we practice, if this is what we do, we drive, we steer, we work on our computer, we work on our phone, we have to do the opposite, which is why we open up through the pecs, open up through the chest to help relieve the overstretched neck and shoulders. Go ahead and come back up into your bridge pose. If you would like to practice supported bridge by all means, you can take a block, place a block under your sacrum at any height. And not only physically are we asked to overstretch these neck and shoulders, but emotionally, mentally, we shield, we hide, we shrink, we implode, we protect our own heart. Heels up, lower down, pause, breathe. And there's no reason to judge ourselves for doing this. this that, that's a defense mechanism. Our body's very capable of understanding what we need more than we do. So it will guard up, it will shield, it will protect us. Lift up into bridge. So it is our job to say, I got you. You're safe. You're free to be, to receive, to want, to need. You deserve 
all of it, simply because you exist. You don't have to earn it. Your existence is enough. Heels up, spine down, breath in, breath out. Lift your right leg up in the air, bring the outside of your right ankle to your left thigh. Stay here practicing reclined pigeon. Maybe you wanna draw your left knee in towards your chest a little bit more. Or to add the twist, you're gonna bring your right foot over to that left side. Push your elbows into the earth, rotate your chest to the ceiling. Maybe even cactus your arms to help get in those pecs a little bit more. Maybe you wish to look over toward that right arm or close your eyes. You can even wiggle that left foot a little closer to your body, draw that right knee away from you. So we're getting this beautiful stretch in the hips, lower back, glutes, psoas, obliques, pecs, neck. Bringing our gaze back to center, drawing our legs back to center, uncrossing the legs, sole the feet onto the mat, picking the hips up, leveling them out, and bring your left leg up in the air, back outside of your left ankle to your right thigh. Stay here, maybe practicing recline pigeon or twisting by bringing the sole of that foot over to the floor. Maybe your left, your right foot is walking a little closer to your Practice arms, maybe you want to look over to the left. So are you convinced? Do you believe in the truth that you deserve? You deserve to receive. You give so much. It's okay for you to ask what you need. It's okay for you to want what you need. It is okay for you to exist, to be the beautifully imperfect mess that you are. Gaze back to center, legs back to center, leveling the hips up, picking them up, releasing them down. Knees to chest, maybe rock side by side. Nose to knees, squeeze into a ball. Give yourself that well-deserved hug. Squeeze everything really, really tight. Take a deep breath in. Then take a little bit more and exhale. Release down, legs down. Arms beside you, palms up to receive. Allow your feet to fall away from one another. Release ankles, lower legs, knees, upper legs, hips. Relaxing legs, top to bottom, bottom to top. The whole pelvis, abdominal muscles, chest, shoulders, spine and back, torso, top to bottom, bottom to top, shoulders, upper arms, elbows, lower arms, wrists, palms of hands, relaxing arms and hands, top to bottom, bottom to top, neck, Jaw. Let the tongue fall from the roof of the mouth. Ears, cheeks, eyes, eyebrows, 
space between the eyebrows, ninth eye, forehead, top of the head, scalp, back of the head, inside the head, brain stem, downstairs brain, upstairs brain, right side brain, left side brain, sensing the brain form, integrating, surrender brain, inside the head, face, outside the head, whole body with a deep audible sound. Welcome to your Shavasana. opening our deepest eyes. The inner life of any great thing will be incomprehensible to me until I develop and deepen an inner life of my own. Gently wiggle fingers and toes. Bending knees, bring the soles of the feet onto the mat. Right arm overhead, left arm over chest. Roll to the right, pausing in the fetal position. Pressing off with your left hand, come to a seated position, sitting tall, palms up eyes closed, breath in, in a little more, breath out, <sighs> reminding yourself, your heart. I deserve I am enough. It's okay to receive. Inhale, arms down, around, and up, gathering the energy of our practice today. Exhale, hands to heart center as you allow my words to become your words to close the practice today. I am a vessel for divine light, seeking the best and ultimate healing. Prayer hands to mind's eye. Thank you for this divine light. Guide me well. Prayer hands back to heart. Closing with an ohm. Um, bowing head to heart, taking a moment of silent gratitude. The 
divine light in me honors the divine light in you. Namaste. Thank you so much for joining me today. Please remember that all these classes are contribution based. So there should be a link in the description that will send you to a website. So contribute to whatever your financial well being serves you. Um, and also, I would really love your feedback if there is a class that you are looking for or something that I am not offering. Please uh, fill out the survey or shoot me an email. Okay, yogis, have a beautiful day. Don't forget to stay in the light.